Hey, what is going on everybody out there? This is Jake James Lugo. Welcome to the channel and welcome to this brand new JJ's One Man Podcast. And right now when I'm recording this is actually on the Sunday following Summer Game Fest. So we've already had the PlayStation Showcase beforehand. We've had the Summer Game Fest Showcase itself with Jeff Keighley. We've had also the Xbox Game Showcase as well. And at the time I'm recording this too, the Square Enix Final Fantasy 16 pre-launch event is about to go down. So I'm not really going to talk too much about Final Fantasy 16. Most of you guys out there already know I'm getting the game. I can't wait to play it. I'm hyped up for it. It comes out right before my birthday. But regardless, though, I do want to talk about some games because Summer Game Fest was pretty successful this year. There was a lot of interesting stuff with the showcases that happened throughout the entirety of the weekend leading into the rest of this week. Uh, there's still a couple more presentations that are going to be happening, specifically the Ubisoft Forward one, which now just shot up to the top of my list to pay attention to, which we'll get into in just a bit. But the main thing was is that I want to talk about all these games, man, because there's a lot of stuff to get excited about. There was a lot of cool reveals, a lot of cool like presentations, details, gameplay showings, as well as also announcements. There was a lot of stuff that went down over the last couple of days. And this reminds me of E3 time in the sense of being excited to see brand new games, to get excited about announcements for games, see what the different publishers and the developers are up to. This is a good time right now. Granted, I'm not in LA, I'm not in California actually seeing all this stuff, but I'm still partaking and actually following all this stuff as it comes out. I can't complain because we're getting a lot of games that I'm excited about, which is awesome. So let's start talking about some of these games, man, because there's a lot to run through. Like I even have to use my phone here to just look at all the different announcements that happened that we actually got over the last few days. So I'll start off with the Microsoft one, the Xbox Games uh, Showcase, because that was the one that just happened today as I looked for the PlayStation stuff, just to kind of refresh my memory but basically we got a lot of games in the xbox game showcase we got the first reveal of fable or the first official reveal of fable because we had an announcement like a while back like a couple of years ago i think uh during a microsoft uh, press conference but today we actually got to see this game uh, in a cutscene type of form which i guess was in engine maybe had a little bit of gameplay not really but it was still like we actually get to see what this game is. So the new Fable looks pretty dope. The new Fable looks pretty interesting. I was hoping to get to see this during this presentation, and we finally got to see that, which is cool. That's the type of stuff that you want to see, and they opened up the show practically with that. Now, the other thing, too, with Microsoft is that they had a lot of interesting stuff, not everything that people wanted to see. Like, we didn't get Killer Instincts. We didn't get any new, like, Halo stuff. We didn't get Perfect Dark a lot of people were hoping for games like that, which I'm not even mad about it because we still got other stuff that was pretty awesome. The biggest one for me, like you guys know, if you've been following me on Twitter, which you should be if you haven't already, I was talking about Star Wars Outlaws. So Star Wars Outlaws, unexpectedly to me, came out uh, as a big reveal during this conference. It's the Ubisoft massive entertainment game that's been uh, been worked on for a while. It's the open world Star Wars game that we've been hearing about for quite some time. Now, some of the people over at Massive did talk about how we were going to see this game uh, sometime maybe later this year. I was expecting to see it maybe like announced or revealed during the Game Awards, but I'm really happy that we got to see this game now. And surprisingly enough, we're going to get gameplay of this during the Ubisoft Forward presentation, which is awesome. So not only do we know what the game is, we finally got to see it. We got a title, okay? We got a time frame, which this game, Star Wars Outlaws, takes place between The Empire Strikes Back and Return of the Jedi. It stars two characters, two brand new characters. I think it's, uh, what is it? I think it's Key or K. Uh, is the main character's name and her partner Nyx, which is like this little kind of like a little creature that looks like one of the furry uh, creatures from like, I don't know, I think maybe from like Jedi Survivor, the ones that you run into, the little moblins or whatever. But still, the brand new character set within uh, during the original trilogy time frame. So the Empire and the Galactic, uh, was it the Rebellion, are still fighting in the Galactic Civil War against each other. So, and on top of that, they even show little like shades and little quick uh, shots of Han Solo still frozen in carbonite. To really kind of give an idea of like what's going down. So I'm looking forward to this. I can't wait to see this gameplay. It's being done by the same team that worked on The Division. And I can't wait to see the gameplay. I, I really want to see what's up with it. We get some ideas of like maybe planets that we go to. As far as maybe Coruscant, Tatooine. I thought that we saw Naboo as well. We might be going to Bespin it sounds like at some point. But who knows. I'm also curious to know if we're going to run into the job of the hut Because of the time frame that we're in right now. And we're dealing with the Star Wars underworld. And it's dealing with like scoundrels bounty hunters and heist uh you know there could be any sort of things that go down with this but i'm excited about that 
The other one, too, that we got to see that was announced was Like a Dragon. There's They're getting a brand new game that's uh, very similar to Like a Dragon that was, uh, yeah, I think it was Like a Dragon. Oh, my God, I can't remember the name, but it's the RPG one that's like more like a tactical RPG or a turn-based RPG uh, that's starring that same character that got announced. And that was like super random, super out of nowhere, but it's pretty cool. The bigger JRPG announcement, which was really official this time, was Persona 3 Reload. For a lot of people, we have wanted to see a Persona 3 remake for quite some time, and it kind of got spoiled like the other night where I actually got to write about this over on Clownfish TV, where the social media for Atlas posted up the announcement for it way early in advance and immediately pulled it down. So they totally screwed up that surprise. They screwed it up for that game, which is coming uh, early 2024, more than likely. And uh, Persona 5 Tactica, which is a tactics game that's, uh you know, very takes place in the same uh, universe as Persona 5, but it has a whole new story or whatever else. And it's different types of gameplay that I think is coming out November of this year. So new RPGs for Xbox, which is pretty cool. It'd be even better if we got like a Lost Odyssey or something, but I'm not complaining. I mean, we're getting a lot of JRPG stuff this entire year, which is pretty awesome. Starting in the next couple weeks or the next week or so with Final Fantasy 16, but I digress, right? Now, the other things that we did get with the Xbox conference, we did get Starfields. We got to see a little bit more of Starfield. They had a whole presentation of it afterwards, but they did show a trailer during the Xbox game showcase. This game looks pretty deep, looks pretty big, looks pretty crazy. Again, this is a Bethesda RPG, so it's going to be massive with the amount of space you can roam around in, the customization options, the combat with the first and third person shooting. Looks pretty darn good. If you're into games like Fallout, if you're into games like The Outer Wilds or anything else similar to that, or even even I would even argue uh, No Man's Sky, this is going to be right up your alley because this is pretty much Fallout in space. So that's like the best way I could describe it. And like I said, it looks pretty good. The combat, you know, the firefights that they showed during the presentation afterwards looks pretty interesting. I don't know if it's necessarily something I would jump on. Again, I'm not a huge Bethesda fan other than like Doom and maybe a little bit of Fallout. But even then, I'm not like a diehard Bethesda fan. But I do respect some of the stuff that they're doing, which is pretty cool. Uh, the other stuff that we did get to see, we got to see a little bit of Hellblade 2, uh, Senua's Saga, which is the sequel to Hell- Hellblade Senua's Sacrifice. Um, this game looks pretty trippy, pretty wild, pretty interesting. I don't know if it's going to be as short as the previous game. I'm hoping that it's a little bit longer, but it does look like it's going to take Senua into some pretty crazy places. Like the trailer was short, but it did at least you know give us an idea of the tone and the atmosphere that this game is going for. Uh, We did get a lot of other games that were shown that was pretty good. There was a lot of different ones for Xbox fans, a lot of indie games, a lot of third-party games, uh, a lot of different stuff, which is awesome. So if you're into Xbox, there is a lot for you to look forward to, especially coming in towards the later half of this year into 2024. I think Xbox is going to have a really good 2024 with a lot of the big titles that are all in the way. And that's not even counting some of the titles we didn't even get to see this time around, you know, that they might be still cooking in the oven for all we know. Again, Perfect Dark wasn't shown. We got no Killer Instinct no gears of war nothing halo related there's a lot of different things that could be in the oven right now we just don't know it but i digress let's talk about some of the other stuff that happened at summer game fest man because there was a lot that happened at summer game fest like i don't understand because i saw some of the reactions today uh for the xbox game showcase and they were saying that it was better than the sgf presentation i totally disagree I mean, you got to be either a really diehard Xbox fan to say something like that or completely blind and delusional because we got some major showings at the Summer Game Fest. There was a lot of big stuff, a lot of cool surprises, a lot of good gameplay showcasings, as well as also just uh, release windows and stuff. It was pretty awesome. A uh, big one for us at the Summer Game Fest was Mortal Kombat 1. We finally, not only did we get the reveal stuff prior to this, but we got to see gameplay. And Mortal Kombat 1 looks dope. A lot of people says it looks way too similar to Mortal Kombat 11, and I don't think that's a big deal. I think this is a NetherRealm game. You're going into it expecting exactly it to be that, a NetherRealm game. Uh, another Realm Studios game, I should say. Um, and the characters and the roster seems interesting. The cameo fighters and their implementation seems interesting. They pretty much act like assist from like the Marvel versus Capcom games. Only you have like a separate meter for them, which is pretty neat. And some of the fighting, some of the combos that we saw for these characters looks pretty awesome. I also saw on a various different like social media posts that different uh, fighting game community members got their hands on it with it. You know, I got to play a little bit with it over there at a, in a, was it the actual place where they were holding a, uh, Summer Game Fest? Uh, I saw Sonic Fox get to do some like combos with it. I saw Maximilian dude playing a little bit with it and he did a video about it that gets into detail, which I thought was cool. Uh, Justin Wong was out there talking about cameo fighters, talking about the roster and just how it feels to play Mortal Kombat 1, which is great. This game is coming out in September of this year, which is awesome. So I cannot wait 
to play this because I'm a big Mortal Kombat fan. I love MK11. Even though I'm not super competitive with it, I am a big fan of like the the, the lore, the story modes, a lot of the single player content of the Mortal Kombat series. And this one looks like it's going to be just as good and just as interesting with that. The other stuff that we got at Summer Game Fest as well too, the other big one was Final Fantasy VII Rebirth. This closed out the show, so even though I'm talking about it now, it was at the end of the show, and it looks good. We got to see a little bit of exploration, a little bit of gameplay with combat. We got to see some of the new characters, including Yuffie joining the party. We got to get a little bit of a hint and a teaser of what might be going on with this story. We got to go and check out Cosmo Canyon, uh, a lot of the places where Cloud and the crew are going to be roaming around in the open worlds. There's a lot of places that this team is going to go to, and it looks beautiful. It looks awesome. It sounds great. I just can't wait to get my hands on it. Like, there's a lot of stuff going on even in that trailer. Even stuff that seems like it's alluding to maybe, like, different time frames or, or like, parallel dimensions and other stuff. If you finish Final Fantasy VII Remake, you'll understand exactly what I'm alluding to. But go watch the trailer if you haven't seen it already. There's a lot of cool stuff in there. You know, between Final Fantasy XVI and that game, eventually, which is coming 2024, early 2024 from my understanding... Oh, Final Fantasy fans are going to be really happy. Let me tell you, <laughs> yo, because this week you got Final Fantasy 16. You got all that time right up to Final Fantasy 7 Remake to, or Final Fantasy 7 Rebirth, I should say, to play that. So a lot of good stuff going on. A couple other things I should mention uh, that is pretty cool that we got from Summer Game Fest uh, was uh, Sonic Superstars, which is like a super random surprise that, uh, what is it? I thought was pretty dope. I thought it was pretty cool. It's a old school classic Sonic just done in a 3D style, like a 2.5D type of thing. I thought that was cool. And you know, I want to play it. I think it looks awesome. I think it's amazing. And, uh, you know, it's not, it might not be as good as like Sonic Frontiers, like for some people, but I like classic Sonic more than I do modern Sonic. That's just kind of my thing. I grew up with Sonic the Hedgehog. I was there since the beginning of that franchise. And that just kind of resonates with me more, even though I know a lot of Sonic fans swear by like the adventure style format or even, uh, Sonic Frontiers now, but I digress. Um, there was a lot of other games that were also shown during Summer Game Fest. There was a lot of different things that they kind of dived into. Uh, the whole kind of like Nicolas Cage thing with Dead by Daylight. I thought it was like super random, super goofy. There was a couple other games here and there as well that were talked about, which I thought was cool. But regardless, though, those were some of my big picks from that little presentation. There's a little bit of something for everybody with a lot of these showcases, which is, again, great. I feel like you can't just cater to one side of the audience or the other. You have to have a little bit of something for everybody when you're, you're like, you know, doing something on this big of a scale, okay? Now, let's talk about this PlayStation Showcase because the PlayStation Showcase I felt was good. A lot of people were really down on it, and I really didn't understand that. I said that, like, yo, you guys got to temper your expectations because there was games here to show. There was a lot of stuff that they showed. Uh, it might not be for you specifically, but they did show a lot. The big thing, obviously, was the gameplay showcase for Spider-Man 2. Spider-Man 2 looks dope. It was also at the Summer Game Fest uh, presentation as well. The gameplay looks awesome. I cannot wait to get my hands on that. It's going to be coming out sometime fairly soon. I believe it's September as well, or it's sometime this year. But um, what we saw there, we saw a little bit of gameplay with the black suit Spider-Man for Peter Parker. We saw a little Miles Morales action. We saw the lizard. We saw Kraven the hunter. We saw some of the enemies that uh, Spidey and Miles are going to be fighting each other with, or Peter and Miles are going to be fighting uh, together. A lot of good stuff with that game. They Insomniac does great games. They look, they make phenomenal games. Spider-Man on PS4, Marvel Spider-Man PS4 was awesome. If you haven't played it, you need to go play it because this game is going to be an evolution of that. It's going to be even more stuff. And there's going to be a lot of other uh, places you're going to go to within New York City, apparently. You're going to be going to, I think it's Queens and Brooklyn, if I'm not mistaken, or maybe the Bronx, who knows. But they did kind of like allude to like some of the other locations they'll be going to, which is cool. Now, some of the other stuff that was there, Metal Gear Solid, uh, what is it? Metal Gear Solid, uh, what is it? Not beta. Oh my God, what is it called? The, the actual name of it. Metal Gear Solid Delta, that's what I meant, because it's basically Metal Gear Solid 3 Remake. Metal Gear Solid Delta is basically the same original story, the same dialogue and everything else, but reimagined on modern hardware. It's going to be given all new visuals and stuff. They didn't really kind of detail a whole bunch of it, you know, as far as like, you know, the developments I got. They did later on reveal who was making it. I can't remember at the moment, but it was another team that pretty much... Hideo Kojima's not involved. It's not something that he's going to be, you know, associated with. So there's a lot of strikes and a lot of things that people bring up that are against this game. But I'm looking forward to it, at least seeing how this goes. If this remake does well, I could totally see them going into some of the other games to remake them. Maybe call Metal Gear Solid 1 remake Metal Gear Solid Alpha and then kind of like stick with that whole motif of the different naming conventions. So Delta, Alpha, maybe Beta for Metal Gear Solid 2 remake. Who knows at this point? But at least make this one at least good. You know what I'm saying? 
Uh, besides that, uh, Bungie revealed that they're working on Marathon. Marathon is one of the original games that Bungie was working on before Halo that was originally supposed to be on the Mac. And I, they, I guess that they did put it out there. It was, you know, had its own following and stuff, but it never really caught on in the same way that Halo caught on. I know there's a lot of old school like FPS heads that are really all about this because this is like their jam. They're getting their series again after all these years. But a lot of new people don't know this. So this is going to be their first introduction to that. So hopefully Bungie makes it really good and people could really get a kick out of it. They also had extra content with some of the stuff for uh, Destiny 2, which I believe is the final d- content or DLC for Destiny 2. Who knows? But it looked pretty cool, but I'm kind of felling off from Destiny at this point. I, I just don't really care about it as much anymore because I played so much of it way back when. Now, the other thing that they did, uh, what is it, show at the very end of the PlayStation showcase was Project Q, which is basically like a handheld like tablet dual sense controller. It's basically a tablet with the dual sense ends on it. And it's not a console kind of like the Switch or like, you know, the Steam Deck or anything of that nature. You have to stream your games from your PlayStation 5 to that device. So that way you'll be able to play it. So maybe if you're like, you know, streaming it through another room, I wouldn't go on the road with this thing. Maybe you could say you could do it through Wi-Fi and stuff, but I don't think that this device is really meant for that. I don't think this is even going to really appeal to a lot of people out there. They also did showcase some earbuds, which did look pretty cool. But again, unless you're all about PlayStation tech, you're all about like the fashion statement with that i don't even think this is going to be such a huge seller i could be wrong because there's a lot of playstation heads out there that buy everything playstation like their whole tech living like actual room like their their whole man cave and everything else all playstation decked out with tech but i digress it's not something that i feel like i would run out and go get same thing with project q at least you know the details that we know about it right now uh it does seem like it's going to be just for that small percentile of people that are diehard playstation 5 people so anyway besides that The main thing, the reason why I bring up all this stuff is because, like I was saying earlier, there's a lot of games happening right now. There's a lot of big games that are coming. There's a lot of big game releases we've even had for the month of June. This whole month, this whole year, I should say, of 2023 has been really good with game releases between Hogwarts Legacy, between Jedi Survivor, uh, Diablo 4, Tears of the Kingdom, Zelda Tears of the Kingdom, uh, Street Fighter 6. We're about to get Final Fantasy 16 in like another week and change. Like it's been so far, just half the year has been awesome. And that's not counting what we're getting afterwards later on in the year. There's been some duds, you know, obviously with Redfall, obviously with uh, the Lord of the Rings Golem, but all the great stuff about this year with games and new game releases totally outshines a lot of the craziness that we've had from some of those duds there. Because I feel like 2023 thus far, if this keeps up with the momentum, is going to be one of the best games, one of the best years in gaming releases by far. Because it just, again, there's so many good ones coming out that are like scoring in the high 80s to 90s, maybe hundreds for some people. Tears of the Kingdom, even though I think that it might be overhyped by a lot of people, it's still doing phenomenal for many that have played it. Same thing with Jedi Survivor. Same thing with Street Fighter VI and Diablo IV, which people just got not too long ago. Like, And I feel like the same thing's going to be the case with Final Fantasy XVI. So when you got a bunch of big releases, one after the other, hitting those 90s and 100s, yes. Like, that that's what we want to see out here. Now, don't get me wrong. Your wallet might be crying because of you going out to get all these games. But the beauty of that is, is that you don't necessarily need to get everything around release. Especially with a lot of these big games like Tears of the Kingdom, like Final Fantasy 16 coming out, uh, that are going to be eating up a lot of your time, like 20, 30 plus hours, maybe 50 plus hours at least. Especially that's what I keep hearing with Tears of the Kingdom. But you still got plenty of stuff to play throughout the rest of this year. Leading into the holiday season at the end of this year, I feel like there's going to be so much stuff for people underneath the Christmas tree or during Hanukkah or Kwanzaa. There's going to be a lot of great stuff people are going to be playing on those holiday days, on the holiday season. It's going to be awesome. So anyway, just wanted to talk about a lot of that stuff, to give my opinions and thoughts about some of the announcements and some of the other stuff from the different showcases. We've gotten three big ones throughout this entire weekend. Like I said, at the time I'm recording this, They've they've already been doing the stuff for Final Fantasy 16. Not really much for me to say. I like I mentioned earlier, I'm already going to be getting the game. The only thing that they did mention is that there's going to be a demo that comes out on PlayStation 5 at the end of the showcase, which I might download and play it, but I don't know if I'm going to do a video about it because again, I just don't see no need to do so right now. I'm picking up the game on launch. I already got it pre-ordered, son. I'm ready to go. So I don't need to see as much or I need to make such a big deal about it. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I'm just putting it out there. So regardless though, let me know what's up. 
in the comment section down below. Leave me a like on this video. Make sure you guys are checking out the rest of the episodes of the podcast. There's a lot of episodes right now in a playlist for you guys. If you missed out on any of them, there's a ton there. Go check it out. Show it some love. Let me know if you enjoy it overall. Uh, make sure you subscribe to the channel if you haven't already done so. I'm working right now on my video review of Street Fighter 6. I know it's a little bit late, but I have to go through all this footage. I have to put everything together. I'm still video editing it all, but I got all the main parts done. I did all the on-camera stuff. I did all the VO. So this week, probably by tomorrow, the day after, it should be done and on the channel for you by the time you're uh, was it listening to this. If it's not already up there, it's coming very, very soon. But anyway, I will talk to all of you guys again very soon. Peace out and stay epic, everybody. Mm-hmm.